Hi, everyone. Cheryl Cran here for the next episode of the Next Now podcast. And today I'd like to talk about the fact of recruiting, but also interviewing and onboarding in a hybrid workplace reality. So obviously, you know that if you're recruiting for your workplace and your workplace has a workplace hybrid policy, what you're going to want to do is make sure that in all your reach outs, you've got hybrid and you've spelled out hybrid in the job description so or in the job posting. So for example, you know, hybrid for us means, you know, this and we have hybrid and you want to give some taste of that because people are going to ask you that anyway. So you want to give more information in your postings than you used to give before, as much as you can that you feel comfortable with, so that people know what to expect when they're sending in a resume with you and you're not wasting time. In other words, your definition of hybrid doesn't match up with their definition of hybrid and therefore you're wasting each other's time as it relates to whether they're a fit or not. The other thing with interviewing is really important is, you know, I was just talking with a leader today around this, around letting potential um, new hires coming in, what your organization, how you determine success in productivity, um, what your performance-based culture is like. So you want to be able to say in that interview, as an organization, we measure performance in these ways. Uh, we do our performance re uh, reviews, you know, every, we have discussions every 30 days, but we do our formal reviews every two, you know, twice a year or once a year, or whatever it is, you want to let them know how performance is measured. You also want to let them know that you are a performance-based culture. And so, you know, you are looking for workers who understand the mission, the purpose, the values, they understand the goals of the organization, that you, um, that you are able to link their job and what you're hiring them for to the overall strategic plan and goals of the company. The other piece in the interview is letting them know around, you know, the culture piece. There's been a lot of dialogue around culture and hybrid, uh, letting them know that, you know, the in-office culture and how that's translated into the hybrid culture is really helpful for you to speak about in the interview. So, for example, you might say, you know, as an in-office culture, we were all very, you know, uh, connected and, you know, we had these kinds of activities and, this, and as a hybrid culture, Here's how we stay connected. Here's how we continue to engage our workers in the in the culture. So you want to talk about culture and engagement in that interview as well, because the more you can sort of give paint a picture of why your hybrid culture is so appealing, that's that's the way to do it is to use that language. And then with onboarding, it's it's funny, you know, I've talked to a lot of leaders who say, you know, onboarding in 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 hybrid is really difficult. Because, you know, you if you hired a, a full full time virtual worker, a lot of people have the belief that you can only onboard if you're sitting beside them or you're in person. That's not true. You can actually onboard very successfully virtually, but you have to be very clear and succinct about the training schedule. So a couple of tips I'll tell you is with with person to person onboarding, you know, you could sit with somebody for a day and transfer knowledge and give them a sense of the culture. And they could meet with different people within the organization. With virtual, you need to schedule all of that. So you need to schedule, okay, on day one, you're going to talk to the CEO for 30 minutes and the CEO is going to share with you his or her vision of the company and what where they're going. And then on day two, you're going to talk to accounting. And on day three, you're going to talk to sales. And on day four, you're going to talk to marketing. You actually want to have it planned out for the virtual meetings that they're going to have. You also want to lay out the training schedules and the timelines for efficacy. So for example, if you're training them on a particular you know, technology that's specific to your business, you might say, we're going to train you on, for example, Salesforce as it relates to your job and your markers of success would be by the end of week one, you'll be able to enter customer data. By the end of week two, you'll be able to. So, so really clearly specifying their 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 onboarding schedule as it relates to the people they're going to meet and the people they're going to learn from, but also the training schedule. And this can all be done virtually. So the key to a really successful onboarding virtually is sharing your screen, giving examples, walking through um, process by sharing your screen. 
um, having those role plays. So giving ex examples of, you know, if a client is doing this, let's role play it. Um, having scenarios of working with different departments. All of those things are going to help that onboarding process be more successful. And in today's environment, with it being a worker's market, I think it, I read a percentage the other day that 52% of workers, if they're not feeling successfully onboarded or integrated into the culture within 60 days, they're already making a decision as to whether they're going to stay uh, you know, for a period of time. So there's no question that we are in this, you know, in the workers market, it's it's more demanding on leaders than ever before. Uh, I was just having a conversation yesterday with a leader who was just like, what's happening? You know, we used to have the we used to have the control as the as the um, organization as to how the interview process went or we would ask the questions. And now it's almost like we're being interviewed as an organization. And I would say to you, yes, that's exactly what's happening. So rather than see that as uh, something that's bad or or you know um you know why why don't why aren't they just being happy that we've got a job for them and seeing it more as a mutual win-win process that we're now dealing with in the workers market and just for the purpose of this podcast reminding you that a workers market means there is workers that are deciding not to work just for the money or just for a position that what's happened since the pandemic is workers are actually looking for work that aligns with life work balance. They're not wanting to just have companies that give lip service to balance. They're wanting to actually be able to live it. So less commuting time, less money on gas, more time with family, more time to exercise, more time for personal well-being. Um, it's funny, another leader was like, I love working in the office. And I said, yeah, but what about when you're working in the office and people are interrupting you all the time? And they're, and he's like, oh, that's a really good point. He's like, yeah. I said, well, does that happen to you at home? And he said, yes, but it's my family interrupting me or it's the dog barking or it's these other types of interruptions. So I've said it before on previous podcasts that not everybody is suited to working fully remotely and not everybody is suited to working fully in office, but some people choose their preference is to work full time in office. I have a number of clients who they choose because they feel more productive. They like the separation of having free time to think while they are commuting, getting to the office, having that be their environment, and then having that hard stop at the end of the day to go home, use that commuting time to decompress, go home to their personal life. For the virtual advocates, they love that they can get up early, have a workout, get their kids to school, get into work, have work out maybe again at their lunch break or take the dogs for a walk. So you can see the, the personal merits of each of those styles of working. But what I have found and the researchers have found is not everybody's effective working remotely because they might become less motivated or they become less focused or they become more easily distracted. So those are all true factors in this new hybrid reality. I think the biggest takeaway uh, from this particular episode is we need to be having one-on-one -on -one dialogues with all our workers around what do you think you're best suited to? When do you work at your best? Is it in office? Is it remote? Is it a combo deal? And why? So bringing that all to the, the original opening of this about you know interviewing and onboarding and training, we need to really check our biases at the door and look at it as if we're going to start expanding our workforce to be nationally based or even internationally based, meaning people can work from anywhere to work for our organization. We need to get better at virtual interviewing. We need to get better at virtual onboarding. And we certainly need to get better at virtual training. And those are the opportunities with the hybrid workplace right now in regards to those three. So that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for future interviews that I'm planning coming up in October that I can't wait to share with you. All the best. Take care. Take care.